What's up everybody, this is Keith with VoIPEngineerTraining.com and this is a quick demo video about SIP transactions and dialogues. So a SIP transaction, what is a SIP transaction? Well, first you need to know that SIP is a transactional protocol. Everything that occurs between a user agent client and a user agent server consists of a series of independent messages. In a nutshell, a SIP transaction is what occurs when a single request is sent out, we get zero or more provisional responses, and then we get a final response. Here's an example. We've got a UAC that sends an invite toward a UAS. The invite is sent, so that's our request. 100 trying, that is the provisional response. And the 403 forbidden, that's the final response. And finally, we send an ACK to that 403 forbidden. So right here, that whole thing is one transaction. Okay, but things get a little bit tricky in a minute here. If the transaction is an invite and the final response is a 200 OK, the ACK is not included within that one transaction. The ACK, it's its own transaction. Here's another example. The UAC sends that invite toward the UAS. 100 trying, that's our provisional response, and then a 200 OK. So that right there is one transaction. When that ACK is sent from the UAC back toward the UAS, boom, that guy right there, that is its own transaction. Now, according to the RFC, the reason for this is rooted in the importance of delivering all 200 OK responses to an invite all the way back to the UAC just the way they've got it defined within the RFC. Now, all transactions have a client side and a server side. The client side is known as a client transaction, and I bet you couldn't guess that the server side is known as a server transaction. The client sends a request, and the server replies with a response, aka a response code, and transactions exist between user agents and stateful proxies. Now, when I say user agent, it could be a phone, it could be an actual like SIP server, it could be a back-to-back -back user agent, which is still a user agent, and like I said, a stateful proxy. Here's a little example. So we've got a user agent client, proxy1 and proxy2. Proxy1 and proxy2 are stateful proxies, and finally we have a UAS on the other side. So when the UAC sends a request toward proxy1 being a stateful proxy, the UAC is using its client side and sending it toward the server side. So that's one transaction right there. A proxy one to proxy two, again, client side to server side, that's another transaction. Proxy two toward the UAS, again, client to server. And then on the route back, we've got the responses that are going. So between each of these, between all of the C's and the S's, those are each their own unique transactions. But if we are dealing with stateless proxies, the transaction only exists between the user agents and the stateful proxies on each side. Again, it could be a SIP server. It could be a back-to-back -back user agent. It doesn't matter. The fact is we are just going through a stateless proxy, which in the terms of SIP transactions, stateless proxies are basically transparent. So here we go with our example. The UAC is sending that invite or that request and it goes through proxy one and all proxy one does is forward it. Because it's a stateless proxy, it doesn't give any kind of a provisional response as it goes through there. Proxy one, it knows to route it to proxy two. Again, proxy two, there's no provisional response and that makes it all the way up to the UAS. And the UAS responds back using what is set within the VIA headers for the response routing. Dialogues. Now, a SIP dialog represents a peer-to-peer -peer relationship between two user agents that persist for some amount of time. And what a dialog does is it's responsible for facilitating the sequence of messages between two user agents and for the proper routing of requests between those two user agents as well. So anytime you see a change in like a C sequence number, if it increments by one, or if you want to use the big word that the RFC uses, monotonically, that is all within a dialogue. 
So a dialog is identified to each user agent by a dialog ID. And what the dialog ID consists of, this is what's important, is it's the call ID header value, a local tag, and a remote tag. So let's pop up a little example here. We got a UAC, we got a UAS, and the UAC is sending a request over. And of course, like a good functioning UAS, the UAS, it wants to respond. So let's get some things highlighted here. Now on that request that goes from the UAC toward the UAS, I cut out some of these headers on here to show only the ones that are important for this concept. But if you look at the from header, it has a tag added on it from that request. So in terms of this, this is the local tag from the UAC. If you look at the to header on that request from the UAC, there's absolutely no tag there. And then of course we've got the call ID header. Now if we want to look at the other side of it on the response, again you'll see the from header has the tag that was originally sent by the UAC, but this time the to header has a tag as well. And so in terms of the UAC and the way that it's looking at it, this is now the remote tag. And the remote tag was set by the other party. It was set by the UAS. And again, the call ID is the same. So now that we have a from tag, a to tag, which is the same thing as a local and a remote tag, and then we have a call ID, any other message that goes back and forth between these two, any other transactions, as long as that those two tags and the call ID are there, that is considered in dialogue. Now keep in mind, the dialogue at each UA is not the same. For the UAC, the call ID value of the dialogue is set to the call ID header, the remote tag is set to the to field as I discussed, and the local tag is set to the value from the from field. Now these rules apply to requests and responses, but for the UAS, it's flipped around a little bit. While the call ID remains the same, the remote tag is now set to the value from the from field of the message, while the local tag is set to the value in the to field. Again, here's that set of messages again. So, let's just go over that one more time. From the UAC toward the UAS, my local tag is what is set in the from header. My remote tag is what I glean from the response from the UAS within the to header. That's the remote tag. Call ID stays the same. But from the UAS perspective, my local tag is what I set in that to header, but the remote tag is what you sent me from the UAS in your from. And again, the call ID header remains the same. So dialogues are created through the generation of non-failure responses to requests within specified methods. So only 2xx and 101 to 199 responses with a 2 tag where the request is invite will establish a dialogue. Let's say that one more time. Only 2xx and 101 through 199 responses with a to tag where the request is invite will establish a dialogue. So it has to be, for one, an invite request. It has to have a final response code of a 200. And it has to have, it doesn't have to have these, these are all optional, the 101 through the 199s. Now once a dialogue has been established, either UA may initiate new transactions and keep them within the same dialogue. Now if a UAC initiates a new invite transaction within an existing dialogue, it's known as a re-invite. And one thing you have to remember is that at any given time within a dialogue, the original UAC can become a UAS, and the UAS can become a UAC, just depending on who initiates that request. Now if the request is made where either the call ID, the local tag, or the remote tag differ, the request is now known as out of dialogue. But as long as the remote tag, local tag, call ID, those all remain the same, 
Those are in dialogue transactions or requests. So let's go over a little summary. A transaction is a SIP request, zero or more 1xx responses, and a, a final response code plus an ACK. Think of it like this. It's like buying a drink at the gas station. All right. So you walk up to the counter and you request to buy something. The cashier acknowledges that you exist by looking at you, but the transaction hasn't been finalized yet. So let's call that a provisional response. They then say your total is $5.99. That's their final response. And then you act that by whipping out exactly $5.99. Maybe it's on your card. Maybe you have that in cash, whatever it might be. Now, don't forget, though, if you're dealing with an invite transaction, the act is not part of the initial transaction. Now, dialogues. Dialogues occur when a successful invite transaction has occurred. That's the thing you have to remember. First of all, it has to be an invite transaction. And the dialog or dialog ID consists of a call ID header value, the local tag, and the remote tag. All messages, both requests and responses with the same call ID, local tag, and remote tag are considered in dialog. Now, if either party initiates an invite within Dialog, we call that a reinvite. And you will learn more about why reinvites occur later in this course. Thanks, everybody, for your time. I ask you to please sign up today at VoIPEngineerTraining.com. I'm working on getting this course content all put together. If you don't mind signing up, please go there, enter in your email address, and we'll let you know when the course is ready. Thank you.